boredom. Boredom is, um, if anyone does spiritual work, if you hit boredom, uh, which is a form, it is a withdrawal from the ego, um, then I would say when a spiritual seeker is doing spiritual work and they get bored, it, it's a sign of great progress. Um, because boredom is that the ego hasn't got anything to think about, hasn't got anything to be in fear about, hasn't got anything to be uh, angry about, hasn't got any toys, any addictions to get some payoff out of, you know, or being a victim or whatever it is, and nothing to make a drama out of. And the ego gets, you know, it's very scary for the ego because it's like, no, I need some drama. I need some, I need some addictions. I need some thoughts. I need something. This is unbearable. You know, like quickly, let's grab onto an anger or or some self pity or or some thoughts in the head uh, to keep the the life of the ego going. So boredom. When you hit boredom, because you know, like let's say I'm I am a food addict. So if I give up the donuts, and then I give up the TV, and then I give up my thoughts, uh, then the ego. You know, you get to a place where the ego gets really, really. It's like it's starving for some of its toys to get entertained with, to st stay away from that infinite beingness and the infinite peace and the infinite love, which is which is the layer after the boredom or before the boredom. So it's another layer. You know, there, there's the gross, there's the gross levels of the ego, which is like thinking, and and then the heavy emotions like anger, uh, and fear and shame and guilt which are very, very, uh, very, very strongly in the layers of the ego. Uh, so ego inflation is quite enormous. But then you get to, you let go of all the thoughts, and you let go of the addictions, you let go of the drama, you let go of the thinking. And then and then the ego gets really scared, and it goes like, you're bored. Please pick up some TV, pick up some drama, pick up some anger. Uh, pick up you know you've got to pick something up so to go back into the ego it wants you to go back it doesn't want you to go through the boredom until you hit that infinite peace and love of god so it's like it's 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 actually a very very good sign it means you've gone through the withdrawal you've gone through the release you know you've gone through the release of the payoff of being in your head the payoff of anger fear victimhood uh in wallowing in uh, all those heavy emotions and now there's nothing left and so the ego goes, and the ego sort of says to you silently, I'm bored. Please pick up these lower energies and lower thoughts. Please take them back and uh, you'll feel better. Take back that anger. Take back that thinking. Take back the eating. Take back the TV. Uh, and, uh, oh, it'll be so wonderful to take all this stuff back. Yeah, but you don't want to feel bored. Uh, it's much better to be angry and fearful and, uh, you know, in addiction. So please take on something. So the boredom is like um, it's like the ego dying and screaming to go back. You know, it's like all my toys are gone. It's now the last one of the last ones is the boredom. So there's how do you go through? Well, it's like you know how. So if you if, if I if I talk about allowing or feeling the feelings around fear, anger, shame, uh, actually boredom is not is actually just the same as anger or fear or depression or shame boredom is not who you are it's not the infinite love of your nature boredom is just a, a more refined most people don't get bored because they're you know non-stop watching tv non-stop thinking non-stop angry so they never get to the boredom so if you get to the boredom that's really really good uh, but is boredom the truth of who you are? Do you need to go through the boredom to that infinite love within, or uh, or do you need to go back into those think those thoughts and angers and fears and depressions and victimhood stories and all that? Um, so, of course, um, it's obvious. Uh, you know, uh, boredom is another layer of the ego. It's not really who you are. So if you go through that. One way to go through, I mean, apart from self-inquiry, a very simple way to go through boredom is to go through, uh, I mean, in addiction circles, they call it withdrawal. Just allow yourself to experience the boredom until it, it evaporates off. It's like it, it doesn't stay, you know, it's like the ego dying. 
uh, screaming at you, take back the drama, take back the thoughts, take back the fear, take back the grievance. Um, but if you just stay with it and don't pick up all those other addictions, all those other payoffs you've uh, you've you've now let go, you just allow the boredom, or whether you want to call it allowing or just letting it be, or just not trying to push it away or control it or use on it with thinking or drama or victimhood or fear or TV or whatever it is, or mobile phones, um, then eventually it, it's not the who you are. So it'll evaporate off eventually. It may take a long time. And then that's the infinite peace and silence and that love, that undying love that is always there, except it's obscured by the, the payoff of boredom, uh, anger, fear, thinking, drama, all that stuff that uh, the ego uh, survives on. Without that, the ego will not survive. Or it will be nonstop love and joy and peace forevermore, uninterrupted for all eternity. As St. Francis says, it's in dying, dying of the ego and its payoffs, uh, that one is born to eternal life, eternal love forevermore, unending, non-stopping, because all the transitory rubbish that the ego can hook into has, has died. So that's one way. Of course, the other way, which is more sophisticated for those who are able to do it, is uh, self-inquiry. Is, is there an observer of boredom? Because boredom, you know, there's an awareness that boredom can come and go. There's a deeper observing that boredom is like a cloud that comes and goes. So um, at a certain point, it's like a satori. It's like a spiritual awakening. Oh, there is a witness, sir. There's, there's something deeper that's not bored, that's never bored. There's something deeper that's not thinking, that never thinks. There's something deeper that's never angry, depressed, in pain, that suffers, that's always constant, that never passes and is transitory. And once you get that, that's a, that's a miracle. That's an act of grace. You're in the witnesser of boredom. And then it pops like a balloon. It's like an illusion. When you're hypnotized by boredom, you think it's real. But once you're in the witnesser of it, it just starts to evaporate like, a, like, a, a, like an illusion, like a dream, like a cloud which has been recognized to be not real. And then it, it loses its power over you. All these things are not real, but because they're given attention, there uh, there's payoff, there's drama, there's a there's a there's something in there. Then um, then that um, you know that payoff. Sorry, something just flicked on my screen. Uh, that payoff um, is surrendered, and then you surrender the drama. And the boredom is not so. Either allow it until it evaporates off, cancel it, or uh, inquire into, the, is there a watcher? What's deeper than boredom? What watches boredom come and go? Can that ever be bored? And with that, um, I'll stop recording. <laughs>